Between Horizons. Is it going to be a win or a bin? Let's have a quick read through of the description on Steam. Between Horizons is a narrative 2.5D sci-fi detective adventure. 33 years into the Zephyr's journey, its mission is suddenly jeopardized. Can you find the culprit before it's too late? Experience an enthralling story set in a semi-open world that branches and ends based on your choices. Now I must say I'm sad to have to drop this after about four hours of gameplay. I'm some of the way through, I imagine, uh, about halfway, three quarters through the different uh, mysteries you have to resolve as you go through the game but I do have to release this video and move on to the next one so I haven't completed it but I'm genuinely gutted that I can't go any further with this and actually get to the end hopefully I will in my own personal time get to the end of the story and find out what it's all been about and how it all ties together perhaps in the long run but uh, I think that's an indicative perspective on how much I've enjoyed this overall and I'll of course go into those points now. But before we go into any more detail, I'll just go through a little bit more about what this game actually is and expand on what the description on Steam actually explains about. So you are playing a, uh, a lady who is on a, a ship from Earth, presumably in, in the future somewhat, and you've come from Earth, you are going on this huge journey to another planet to create life and effectively colonize it because Earth's basically fucked, which it is in real life, of course. So we are moving away from Earth to this other place. Now this ship, uh, or Zephyr, uh, has lots of people on board. It's effectively a working city. There's bars, there's farms, there's hospitals, there's residential areas all on board this gigantic ship. And you play somebody who works in security along with, at the beginning, your father who's uh, higher up than you. You're kind of following in his footsteps. Unfortunately, your father uh, passes away, uh, which isn't spoiling anything because I think that seems to be the, the point of the whole game. And you take this lead role of security. You have full access to the higher-ups of the commanders of the ship, to everybody within the ship who has of has some use in the game's story. As you go through the game, there's lots and lots of different things. You have to solve different cases. So you know what you need to do in a case. You know who you need to talk to, perhaps where you need to go. You establish clues. Uh, all the resolutions to clues that you're given and then you make your own mind up with these cases of who the culprit is um, who where the the, the room of the, the problem was and things like that by asking questions looking at things finding other clues analyzing those clues and that's quite cool in its own right because you find a clue you can read about it you can delve deeper into that and it all works basically like that you have to work your way and decide the responsible person or thing for each case now presumably because i've not finished the game at the end all of those decisions come to a head and you are in a position based on those decisions i don't know but you do not know if what you've chosen is correct at the time this is why i'm thinking perhaps this will all come to a head at the end and you will find out how well you've actually done but it's great you have to dig and work it out yourself there's no time limit on submitting uh, your answers either you could do it immediately and not bother doing any investigation that's up to you but you're gonna get it wrong unless you're just super lucky of course but what's the point you want to play the game properly yeah so let's talk about the good things so the look of the game absolutely excellent so although it's two and a half d which works perfectly fine the animations are brilliant so if your character for example mine did pull the gun you see them pull the gun if they're pulling out something out of their pocket you see them pulling something out of their pocket it's not just text and you just have to pretend something's happening on screen. You see it. Yes, there's a lot of text. This is predominantly a text-based game. You have to read a lot of things and see what's what. But the animations work alongside it absolutely brilliantly. The mechanics of the game are excellent. I did allude to those a moment ago in terms of how the problem solving works and uh, the investigations that you need to do. But the puzzles are really, really good. You do have to do some digging to get to the bottom of them. You're given the right information, but not all of the information, because of course, what would be the fun in being given all of the information, there's enough for you to try and dig up and it doesn't tell you how to do it. So I think it does a, a really good, good effort on that. Some great stories with great characters. The whole thing is effectively, as per the Steam description, the ship is sabotaged. And there's so many things that branch off that. But those stories behind that are really good. And the characters are, are memorable. And they're not just generic and boring. They're interesting. So they, they've, again, hit the mark on, on that front too. The mechanisms and the mechanics of playing it themselves are very easy to get to grips with. Very accessible for everybody. Not overly complex, I would say. There's only a few buttons involved. And, you know, you can't 
really go wrong everything's in one place like your personal system that you can look at everything's in there it's just a nice easy game to get used to and anyone can play this i think what i do love about this is in line with the, the look of the game the background changes so it won't hurt for me to say that eventually um, an incident happens on the ship where there's quite a lot of damage as you then walk around the ship after said incident with damage things change things are actually damaged and as you go through and things happen, the background will change accordingly. The, the people in the background, there's lots of um, NPCs as well, um, and they all act differently. So after an incident, they seem to be running around far more manically, for example. But everything is dealt with so well in terms of how the story progresses and the background is not static. There's a map in here, so of course you need to be able to navigate this ship. As I said at the beginning, it's like a whole city, a whole country maybe. And you need a map, and the map's nice and easy to use. There's train systems, there's lifts, there's stairwells, but the map highlights everything. It's very easy to navigate around this uh, this system. And slightly different to what we've discussed so far is the background effects and the music. Now, it's good. It just keeps you in line with everything, and it's just nice in the background. Uh, but there are effects which tie in with what's happening. The music's good. Uh, in fact, the soundtrack's very good. I really like it. However, it's not perfect in my view. There's a section within the personal computer that you use, which contains everything, as I said earlier, of a list of evidences. Those evidences, those evidences even, are people, uh, objects, uh, like the physical clues you might pick up, rooms. You can click on them and then read about them as such. Now, they don't go. So any piece of evidence that you pick up to do with a particular case will just sit there. So you end up, as you play, with loads and loads and loads of bits of evidences that you can click through. And it's too much. Um, what I think should be happening here is if some of them are perhaps auto cleared when they're no longer needed so it clears up some space or you could try and remove them and then of course if you shouldn't remove them because they're later needed perhaps it's blocked but it gets a bit congested and it's annoying to have to keep flicking through your evidences when perhaps they're no longer relevant. Every time you enter the inventory so you press the tab key to go into this personal computer where everything's accessible it never remembers where you were so you could be in the communication section which is a list of all your conversations with people um, and that's the last thing you looked at and then you close the screen when you reopen it you're not back there I found that a bit annoying because <clears throat> for example you can access that screen for map for the map even and I know you can shortcut to map by pressing M and but it's other screens as well so you can look at anything and ultimately when you go back it doesn't remember where you were it just defaults to the default screen which i can't remember what it is exactly but it doesn't remember where you were which is a frustration mildly perhaps and finally of the negatives the there's a space bar button that you can press and it it's like a scanner it shows you wherever you are any clues that are relevant in the case that you're looking at it's a bit too easy in that sense although you still have to do a lot of the legwork after looking at the clues because the clues themselves don't give you the answers you then analyze the clues to dig deeper but to find these clues, just press spacebar. They light up on screen. Not a fan of that. I prefer to find them myself if there's a different way of doing that, maybe. But just by pressing spacebar and it just goes, yeah, they're all there. I'm not a fan of that. So overall, this game is absolutely fantastic. It's going to get a very high rating for me. It's fun. It's challenging. It's got great visuals. It's got a great story, great characters, easy to use uh, interfaces. It's an absolute winner for me, and I think it's just over, well, it's certainly under £15, I believe. So, you know, you're going to get a lot of time playing this. I believe from what I've read online, you're going to get well over five hours. So this is a, a no-brainer for me, a complete recommendation, a great game. Well done to the developers.